Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting and wonderful, I hope, that word chat. We are very glad you are all here. Today, we return to our bread and butter, which is lexicographers. Uh, we have Heather Bonikowski and John Kelly uh, from dictionary.com. Kelly is the senior research editor, uh, and uh, he tells us he decodes slang, trending words, and word histories with a love for unlocking the power of words and culture and education. And uh, Bonikowski is a linguist and lexicographer with a background in education also. She documents new words and evolving usage with a particular interest in markers of identity and culture and language. So we were going to ask them both what that means. Hello and welcome. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Yeah, good to have you here. Um, so I'm going to start out um, with and, and, uh, a, a bit of a, a, a challenge. And I, I should probably, I should, I should be nice to the guests, but I have a question that may seem um, combative, but it isn't. It's uh, serious. And uh, so dictionary.com is not the first place I go um, when I'm looking something up because I am a copy editor and I go with a particular style. So I'm um, beholden to that. But then I also go to like a whole bunch of other dictionaries because I can't help myself looking up the different different um, ways words are put together. So um, this is a bunch of, uh, many people in here are copy editors, not all of us, but what um, what does dictionary.com offer that the others, other dictionaries don't besides being right there at your fingertips with an easy to remember URL. Well, we're not going to begrudge you, Mark, for using other reference guides. In fact, as a copy editor, I think you're doing your job by consulting multiple reference guides. So no hard feelings here. Um, Heather, I'll jump in because I think one of the things that sets dictionary.com apart is that we are a dictionary. Our bread and butter, our core work is a dictionary. And Heather is at the vanguard of that and you know, the ongoing and never ending updates we do. But my side of it is a lot of editorial content and our site is able to provide definitions but also a lot more information around it. We have a slang vertical where we can capture everything from Antifa and Simp to Stocks to BIPOC as it's happening. So that allows us to be hyper relevant and providing people information as they need it. Um, and it allows us to document it as it's happening and giving the lexicographers the due time to study those words, to see how they're being used, um, and to really do that, uh, that core work of the dictionary. We also have a lot of uh, blog content um, mm -hmm. that provides more information about words. So this year we saw, of course, surges of interest around coronavirus words. Um, some of them were just queries on the words themselves, uh, like COVID-19, CDC, even the slang term Rona, um, all of which were in our core dictionary. But sometimes people are confused about the differences between them, pandemic versus epidemic, or virus versus bacteria. So our, our site really takes a lot of pride in providing a good definition and then providing a good explanation of how words relate to each other. So those are some of the offerings that we do. We have our definitions, and a lot of expanded, broadened content around it, deeper dives into why it's trending, why people care, why it's, how it got popularized and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Um, and, and let me tell you my, I, I told this before, what sort of is my gold standard and not really a gold standard, that's not fair, but it's uh, um, the, the, the disappointment I have with dictionaries is that when uh, a few years ago, uh, the day after the Video Music Awards, Miley Cyrus um, was apparently twerking and at, the, at the awards, and I had no idea what that meant. Um, back then, I just never heard the term before. So <laughs> I went to all my dictionaries to look up twerk, and I didn't find it. I thought, well, you know, the whole point of a dictionary is define the word for me, um, that I want to know without, you know, obviously going to uh, Urban Dictionary, um, which are, you know, which is very useful, except, you know, mostly you never know. Except when it's not. Get, except when it's not. So, uh, so I don't know how, how soon did, and I, and I think that's one thing that I've noticed with dictionary.com, you spend a lot of time 
putting emerging words in. And do you do that? Um, I assume you do that faster than a, a print dictionary like Merriam-Webster would be able to. I mean, so we, so the core dictionary is, con I wish I had a crystal ball. I wish I could have seen Miley Cyrus twerking, <laughs> you know, a month before it happened because, because we have a huge backlist of, of words that we're watching. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and drafting and working on and um, any one of those could just have a moment, you know what I mean? And um, I, I guess we were not in front of Miley on twerking, but, okay. but that's, that's what we're really trying to do is we're trying to watch all of it. We've got kind of a, a very broad net mm -hmm. and, um, and then we, we wait, we wait for, you know, for, Migos to to have you know bad and bougie or we wait for Miley to twerk and um and, and we have these crossover moments right where where suddenly a word that was a a video game word or a wrestling word gets used for politics instead and now we can say like mm -hmm. oh that's not just a little niche item that belongs in the core dictionary and in the meantime, you know, John, John is watching the data like a hawk at all times. And, um, and he, sees, he's, he sees before anybody where it's going. And he's, mm -hmm. you know, John, John Kelly on the spot. <laughs> we've been, we've, we, we joke this year that we've been uh, something like a news desk. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's been interesting this year to see, you know, slang wise, yeah, we like to be, we like to be on it because we want to provide the definition of twerk as we can. And we do have a place to do that on our, you know, we have, we call it lexicographical content. So Heather, you can speak to this, but creating a new entry for a word takes a lot of time. And any slang word, as soon as it goes through, uh, well, it can take a long time. And any slang word, uh, as soon as it breaks into the mainstream, you can basically assume that it's, uh, it's been used in certain in-groups for much longer than, you know, uh, NBC News or Twitter was ever aware of. Um, mm -hmm. But it definitely feels like in our culture now, due to the internet, due to the social media, due to how we consume media, that these things are breaking through like never before. So we really do take pains to try to provide accurate, up-to-date information on these things. Cardi B had a song come out called WAP. And that was one of those moments. Um, WAP is something that, you know, uh, the lexicographers will possibly monitor in a way, but it really kind of lives in this slang place. Right. And people just as much, you know, they don't necessarily want the usual dictionary definition for WAP. They want to know, um, they want to know the context behind it. Um, what's, why is it breaking through? What does it mean? Does it really mean what people say it means? Or all these things. And we're able to provide a little bit more, less of the traditional dictionary entry and provide a little article on it. Um, so yeah. we call that lexicographical content. And you know, one thing that's nice about the slang content too is, in our articles is that it gives us a place to let, to, to, to really reckon with the fact that these words are evolving. So we entered Karen in our slang dictionary late last year. We were already behind the ball on that because that's how memes spread. That's how slang spreads. By the time a cishet white guy like me hears about it, I mean, it's probably been around for a little while, right? Mm -hmm. um, and at that point in time, our entry on Karen, it was, it was very much about the meme and the haircut and the speak to the manager joke. But this year, uh, it took off in ways uh, like we couldn't have anticipated. And, and Karen, Karen took on a a racial dimension very urgently and very powerfully. It also came, it also became part of a larger conversation about uh, sexism and misogyny in society and why there really isn't a male Karen. So we also pride ourselves in, you know, updating those things, updating the slang as it evolves and really just reckoning with the fact that language really is constantly evolving and how people need to get that information about words is different than your you know, your, uh, your collegiate dictionary that you open up to look up the meaning of obsequious for. So language is evolving, but how we interact with dictionaries is evolving too. Right. So um, I, I 
I I'm happy to get like as nerdy as as we want to, and uh, and if you know people are bored, it's okay because I'm. But you you mentioned the um the where you are monitoring the new words, emerging words. Can you explain that a little bit better? What's uh, what are you looking at, and how does what's the process there? I'll defer to uh, Heather for her process and how okay. she uh, goes about her. Uh, word watching uh, a lot of it's a lot of it's collaborative, um, but I'm gonna let um, I'm gonna let Heather jump in. Yeah, I mean we're just we're just taking it, it's not it's not magic. We're just <laughs> taking notes. I mean um, we have we have a team. Um, we try to also all of us have you know our own interests, our own little um, special thing. You know we have somebody who's got like is super plugged into like endangered species you know what i mean and for me it's it's like gaming words or or you know pop culture mm -hmm. words and each of us is kind of bringing things that are in our our media menu our, our you know our our daily consumption um to we keep a database and we keep notes and we add notes to each other's entries and um at a certain point it, it, you know, um, I don't know. I, I'm trying to find like in my brain a really bad example because, well, I would say I would be shocked if WAP made it into the the dictionary proper part of dictionary.com. Mm -hmm. It has its article and it would have to cross over in a really meaningful way to some kind of, um, political, social, you know, it, it would have to become something bigger than what, than what it is, you know, at its now. Right. And um, so, yeah, so, but, but, you know, hey, it doesn't hurt to take a note. It doesn't hurt to start your discussion with your fellow editors right now mm -hmm. in the database. And then if it just, you know, goes to the database to, retire and live out its days on a, a database farm upstate um that that happens to some words and that's totally fine you know but um but we we do watch we watch them all and then and you never know i mean sometimes you get these words that cross over and suddenly um like i i seem like i'm a big wrestling fan this latest update but it was because <laughs> i had all these wrestling words that were kind of just being watched um you know jabroni sure but also face and heel and suddenly in the political environment recently it was like oh somebody turned heel on their support for medicare for all or um that was a real heel turn from and suddenly there was this like currency of something that was very um you know it, it belonged to a, a certain realm, to a certain group of people, and mm -hmm. and it it had its moment. So it got its definition. It got its so, sense. So so when so specifically, what what are you? Um, so the, the traditionally, I suppose I'm I'm not sure. I'm you know I'm not a lexicographer, but uh, traditionally, I suppose it's always been um, what is has been printed and usage in. Um, and going back years, we had, you know, legitimate um, classical scholars, you know, classical writers, et cetera. And now we've got, in, I mean, very recently, we now have the ability to look everywhere. Um, and, and, and I, you know, Oxford English Dictionary only recently, um, well, I'm not sure this is entirely true, but recently they, they very rarely add a word that is not written, but is you know, in the case I'm thinking is was in a song, um, because the for one thing the, the the data doesn't isn't there immediately available, although it's certainly becoming that way. So, are so where are you looking for? Or where what's your typical? I mean, you know, process everywhere. Yeah. So, um, okay, so yes, traditional. Okay, so but. But even those traditional sources for dictionaries is, uh, you would think like, well, was it printed? Was it printed by a, you know, a reputable edited 
published and so forth. But no, but, but those dictionaries, they also had, you know, little cards sent in by people who, who had a word about, I don't know, livestock or something, you know, because you want to cover the mm -hmm. full spectrum. And so, yeah, I'm on Twitch. I'm watching people play video games. I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> I, I'm in, I'm in Twitter. I'm, I'm watching, you know, just whatever show on Netflix. I, you would not, it looks like a crime scene around here with the post-it notes because <laughs> I'll be watching TV and I'll, I have to write it down and then I just stick it somewhere and it all comes together later or, you know, or it doesn't, or it was a one-off and that can be ignored. But, um, mm -hmm. but no, I mean, I think it's fantastic that we have so much access. I, in another world, I could only write words from my, from my peer group, from my generation, from, you know, and I would have to, and then I would have to, you know, look through all of the, um, the, the well edited, published um, examples of the language. But, but no, I mean, I think we live in a really rich world where, where pop culture is being elevated and not in a bad way, in a, in a cool way where you get a window into all these other people's worlds and, and lexicons and it's dangerous and you should have a good dictionary that gives you a label that says it's slang or a note that says this word is not for everyone or it tells you when it's offensive but um but that's fantastic that we have all of our dialects in contact now i mean that's i love it right, i'm living right. in the golden age <laughs> is that well how did you uh how did you get into this field? And I imagine, um, I mean, did you, is, is this what you envisioned when you were 12? <laughs> when I was 12? Uh, I think when I was 12, I told my mom I was going to be Secretary of State. It did not happen. Yeah. Um, no, I... So far. Um, I'm not ruling you out yet, Heather. Yeah. Oh, there's time. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, no, I I, um, I I went to school. I was multilingual and I wanted to keep studying languages. I was not super insightful about literature. So, uh, so the other track for me studying the languages that I was studying was to study the linguistics of these languages. And I ended up getting degrees in comparative linguistics and um, and I uh, finished my master's degree and my husband and I got married. That it was a very busy year, 1998. <laughs> um, and um, my husband, my brand new husband, I had a brand new job offer in New York City. And we, I was, I was a Texas girl who um, had, had finished some studies at the University of Texas and and we decided to go have a, a New York adventure. And I got there and I realized, you know, what am I gonna do? I'm a linguist, what am I gonna do? And I was very lucky to be hired by Wendy Nichols oh. at uh, Random House Reference. Mm -hmm. um, I was her editorial assistant in 1999. It was a magical year. And, um, and I really learned a ton about dictionaries during those two or, two or three years. Um, and then I went back to grad school and I went back to teaching foreign language for a while, but I kept picking up, you know, a project here, a project there. And um, I don't know, somehow over time I became a lexicographer. <laughs> um, so it was not, no, it was not intentional. I, I, I stumbled happily down a path and here I, here I have arrived. All right. Well, we got a note from Wendy Nichols before the show saying she was running late, but hopefully we'll get her in here and she, she'll, we can tell her that you uh, had that call out to her because she, yeah, yes. wasn't here to hear it, but shout, shout out to great. Wendy. Yeah. She was a very good boss to me. That's great. Uh, and John, how about what was your path to lexicography? It was accidental in ways too. I think if anything unites us as people who work with dictionaries is not any degree in lexicography, 
That doesn't really exist. It's it's fundamentally curiosity, and it's it's a it's a way of sort of being in the world where you're constantly thinking about things through words. Uh, why why do we say it that way, or where does that come from, and how does that relate to this word, or what does that mean exactly? And I think. Ever, ever since I was young, I always loved word origins. I, I found that uh, the history of words just unlocked something spectacular and improbable about the world. And every little word has this neat story and it gives us an insight into the past. And yeah, I did the English major stuff. I was an English teacher for a while. Um, and then I, I had uh, been working in education Then I left and moved overseas and just sort of stumbled it in some work with dictionary.com on uh, the slang and the slang part. And uh, we kind of went from there. I, I think if you mm -hmm. asked any lexicographer or editor, um, you're going to, you're going to see a, a truly kaleidoscopic background of our work. Um, but what unites us is, I guess, really what unites us all is, you know, we all share language in common. It's just uh, we as a particular set of editors happen to think about the world more keenly, uh, more dorkily, um, more obsessively through words. Uh -huh. So Heather. I would say also just that it's a shame because if someone had told me in a high school or even in my undergraduate years that this was a thing people did, but you know, I think that we're, we're not doing enough outreach as a profession because um, because yeah, no, because most of us just some stumble into it. Yeah. Well, and of course, it, it seems like, uh, you know, dictionaries don't necessarily like to stick around and, yeah. uh, you know, American Heritage no longer has a staff. And so there aren't, there aren't too many places for lexicographers to go, unfortunately. Um, so, so John, uh, Heather apparently watches a lot of wrestling. Um, is there, do you have a, do you have an interest area? Is there a, um, like a, a quirky area you're constantly keeping an eye on or is it just sort of like, you just sit there and look for words everywhere? Uh, I think there are some areas that I have seen uh, particularly productive in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they're very much interrelated. A lot of them deal with uh, this broader category of identity. I think the English language right now, both in the slang words that are being generated, the slang words that have existed that are breaking in the mainstream, uh, a lot of the updates and new definitions that Heather has been doing really have centered around identity and uh, specifically uh, marginalized groups. Um, so we've seen slang uh, around drag culture explode like never before. Mm -hmm. um, so things like uh, tea or face that originate in um, black uh, and Latinx and, and, and drag culture in the early 90s uh, are more popular than ever. Um, and I think one of the vectors is that is they have a bigger footprint on TV. Um, they have a bigger place in the culture. A lot of younger uh, women are watching them and that really kind of helps spread them into the mainstream. Um, and then, you know, another area, of course, and this is, this has always been true for English, but it feels more, it feels more prevalent before is black slang, uh, mm -hmm. especially through the vector of hip hop music, which really is popular music now. So it's really exciting to see how there's all this language activity that's breaking through in, a, in the mainstream. And then you're doing some research on these things and you realize, well, yeah, this has been, this has been in use in, uh, hip hop slang since 1989, but here we are in 2020 and uh, it's having its moment. So language is, it feels like language is changing faster than ever before, but um, it's, it's making some of its old moves uh, just, just like ever before too, where it's you know, slowly spreading from marginalized groups into the mainstream. Um, there's a lot of interesting things going on around memes, um, and you know, Twitter moments and Reddit and 4chan that are breaking through in ways that are both, uh, I'll, I'll say it's very interesting. Uh, sometimes it's scary um, because some of these subgroups uh, have some nefarious purposes, um, but a word like Chad, you know, a Chad as a 
a stand-in for um, a dude. Uh, kind of goes from, you know, darker Reddit quarters, and now it's kind of in our everyday vocabularies uh, as a stand-in for a for a kind of a, a dude bro, as it were. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting work happening around um, you know the language of the internet itself, but it's really exciting to track, write about, and continue to monitor how the language of marginalized groups is is breaking through like never before. Mm -hmm. And that's and and you, you just announced uh, um, fifteen thousand updates to entries at dictionary.com, six hundred and fifty new definitions. Um, so, and a lot of those, I, 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 and I haven't gone through to look and, and sort of categorize them, but it seems that there are a lot of changes um, that do involve identity and marginalized groups and um, what people are, um, want to call themselves, that sort of thing. Um, is that, is it, so uh, is, I, I wonder if you could say that I, I'm, you know, I'm sure that dictionary.com is wants to be descriptive and, and objective and, but is there a little bit of a, um, a progressive slant, a, you know, sort of focused on, uh, you have to pick what you're going after. And so is there sort of a, are we more likely to see, um, more around culture and identity from dictionary.com? We, we strive to both reflect and respect language as it's being used. And I think it so happens that we are seeing uh, a tremendous amount of language change uh, around topics of identity. Um, and a lot of that work also involves not just new words themselves, whether it's uh, Philippinex or trans mm -hmm. plus. I was gonna, or, yeah, I was gonna offer the example of, um, cause you had said, sorry, John had said, um, yeah, no, drag culture and black and Latinx something, something. And I was like, oh, he says Latinx, <laughs> which is interesting because I'm really struggling with um, pronunciation on this word and everybody is. Um, yes, I uh, so, said not the so same thing. For me, I, yeah, okay. So, sorry, I'm just going to totally nerd out on this word just for two minutes. Right, but, um, right, two minutes, go. But for me, I looked at that word and I said Latinx. And then I had the weird experience of listening to people who would say like, um, yeah, so my roommate, Cristina, is Chicana, and she identifies as Latinx. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my goodness, how did you give me Cristina, Chicana, and Latinx? <laughs> um, but I mean, it's, it's a really interesting thing. So I have two theories about this. Okay. Well, so as an employee of dictionary.com, I have to say we will document all of the um possible i mean you actually hear you'll hear spanish speakers who also say latinx um, ah, which is mm -hmm. fantastic yeah. um and then you'll have people who say it's just not possible in spanish i don't like it i like latine um and good for you guys that's fantastic like all of all of this kind of just beauty of of the variety of forms that are out there battling it out right now. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm loving it. But, um, but I was, I was a little bit caught flat footed by Latinx mm -hmm. because there, I, I would have assumed that it was speakers who don't say, who would say Latin, Latino. Right. But I mean, you have speakers who say Latino and Latinx. And yeah. I mean, you do have speakers who say Latino and Latinx, but it's um, it's really interesting to me, and I think it has to do. My theory okay. is that it has to do with acquisition. That this word. So my father's a native speaker of Spanish. He's in his seventies. He is definitely not ever gonna claim that he is Latinx. That is not his word. I mean, I think that this is a word that's used by younger people. This is a word that's used on college campuses. And I think because of where people are acquiring it, they're acquiring it differently than they would 
based on its etymology. And that's really interesting and um, hmm. to be further explored. I would love to hear if anybody has some yeah. insight, please put it in the chat because <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm in full research mode on this. Well, I, I think that's great. And I, I think I am, I acquire language through reading first invariably. Um, and I've always said Latinx, despite the illogic, despite the obvious relation to Latino, Latina. Um, so, but I, it's, but that's a very interesting word for me. I'm gonna geek out a little bit about that too, because it seems so natural and so obvious that, you know, Latino is the male. And so we need a, a an inclusive word. So we say Latino and Latina, um, or, or, or we say Hispanic, but that's different because it's the language and some people don't, don't care for that. But I find it just, a, I, I'm, I'm sure I didn't hear the term more than, you know, a few years ago. And now I see it all the time and it's never, it never strikes me as odd. It's just, it seems totally natural. Uh, AP style book says, don't use it. It's too new. People, you know, may not know what it means, but um, it almost seems like something that is, I, I, does the, does dictionary.com um, label it as in a particular way, non-standard slang, new, anything like that? No, I, no. Um, we, we do give alternatives in the definition, right? We say Latinx is used in place of um, morphologically marked or something, Latino, masculine, Latina, feminine, as a gender neutral, see also a whole bunch of other words that are using X in that way. Um, and we have like a little note about how X might be a kind of wild card mm -hmm. um, and, and, uh, and replace things. Um, and John but, mentioned Philippine but it's not, I mean, it's, it can be very controversial. I mean, the people, people hate that word, love <laughs> that word and are confused by that word. And, um, you know, well, well, it's interesting it, too, is, uh, it's to your point, um, I actually, I think I vary between Latinx and Latinx, probably depending on the environment. Um, but it's really interesting for somebody who lives on a college campus and is younger to assume that every Hispanic or a Latina person or Latino person wants to use it. Um, so we have an entry for it, but we're not saying, we're not prescribing, this is what you need to use instead of Latino or Latina, because there's been some really interesting research that well over 90% of people who self-identify that way aren't using it. Um, so it's part of our language. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to document it, but our dictionary page isn't going to say you're going to be on the wrong side of history if you don't. Um, <laughs> we're not trying to be a dictionary just for progressives. Um, we definitely, I know that I've had a lot of conversations with Heather about this, is we, we take pains to listen to what groups themselves are using and how they're using their own language and treating them as experts and giving them voice. Um, and also looking at a lot of their style guides as well, whether it's GLAD. Um, a lot of these mm -hmm. are informed, uh, GLAD and APA, a lot of these are, aren't just informed by being woke. It's about mental health research and about how different aspects of language or how different words got defined um, have material impact on people in the world. And we think as a dictionary, if we can do anything in our definitions, our content, how we define things, not just what we define, that does good for people in the world. Well, we're on the side of that, regardless of red or blue or progressive or conservative. And I think uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Heather has really, really done amazing work and led the way in uh, making sure that that gets reflected and respected uh, on our site. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I was about to say what John just said, absolutely 100%, I couldn't have said it any better, and then you ended on like a Heather compliment, but I guess, you know, sure, what John just said. It's all about, collab it's all about collaboration, really. Yeah, good. So. How, how, many, how, many are, uh, how many lexicographers are there at uh, dictionary.com? Uh, the, te the team is not fixed. It depends on where we are on projects. Um, hmm. So the same bunch of us keep showing up, but I, I cannot give you a number. Sorry. Oh, 
interesting. Yeah, okay. we'll put it this way. Uh, we we find a way to continue. We work to real hard. We continue to grow, so. <laughs> so uh, aspiring lexicographers. Yes. I, you know. So well, I guess one thing too is, I mean, everyone here is a lover of language and this, I think just kind of circles back on what Heather said too, is we forget that our specialties, our niches can lead us to the work of being an editor or working on a dictionary. Um, you know, we have lexicographers who, as uh, Heather noted, really specialize in language around animals. And that's really particular specific kind of work that's hard to write about. Um, Heather does great work in gaming lingo too. And that has its own challenge too, because tracking down the origin of gaming lingo in the, you know, tabletop games to user board, user, you know, uh, user net boards in the nineties. I mean, that's, that's, that's really tough work in its own right. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we live in, we live in an age where nerd, nerddom is beloved now, <laughs> you know, you could be an expert in uh, needlework, right? And then, you know, your, your ability to know the lingo, having read all the text, being on the messenger boards could lead you to a job where you're editing, you know, kind of the crafts, the craft updates in a dictionary in a way. Um, so mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of potential to translate what you love and your nerd them in a good way around it into editing work around it because you have the experience um, you know, copy editing is an, is an art and it's a trade and it's a craft, um, but you might be a specific copy editor for a particular area, right? Infosec mm -hmm. or cybersecurity or high school textbooks, right? Um, that niche and that specialty can, can really lead you to some exciting places, including the dictionary.com. So. Okay. Is it niche or niche? Sure. I, I... You know, I, it's both, <laughs> but I have found that I think niche is on the rise over niche. What do you think, Heather? I think so too. And I have to reply to Kate and Teresa who are um, talking in the chat over here and they caught oh, my eye because they want to oh, know about the at ad the side. <laughs> and, uh, and no, I would never say Latino. If you spell it, lat you know, Latino, Latina, and then sometimes you put the at to make the O and the uh, and that's a totally valid way to do it, but I would never, I wouldn't say it that way. I would, I would, I would only write that. And then if I saw it in writing and I was reading from a prompter out loud, I would say Latino, Latina. Mm -hmm. um, I do not, I do not know a ton of Spanish speakers that would be happy with Latina, but I could be wrong. There could be some of them out there. So one really interesting one that work you did uh, on X, because I, I think it's a, I think it's a great example of how we have these new terms, how we encounter them in print before we ever hear them, and how we have a lot of flux from the pronunciation is Pinksy. I'm going to type it. Pine is a term for a Filipina, right? And then Pinksy emerged, P-I-N-X-Y, as a gender neutral variant. Heather, do you want to talk about any of your work on that and where that kind of intersects with this conversation we have going on? Um, I will tell you, I just revised both of those today. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, not everyone loves them, um, but they do exist. And so, so like, it, it's actually, it's quite odd because people, people have this complaint about how unpronounceable, how, how Latinx, it uh, violates the very morphology of Spanish. And if you violate, mm -hmm. Spanish morphology, you cannot be showing respect for Latinos in general. Um, people feel strongly. Um, but, but John brought up the weirdest one um, phonologically and morph morphology wise, which is, um, which is you have Pinoy, um, which um, is Filipino with an O-Y, you have Pinay, which is Filipina with an A-Y. And then if you want to do a substitution of the O-A um, paradigm of gender, you have to squish it in and you end up with a syllable that is N-X-Y. Mm -hmm. So you get pink C, um, which I would have predicted not possible. And yet <laughs> it exists. 
Uh-huh. Interesting. How yeah, we, we love to, I mean, we love to, I don't know, you you all are copy editors, you know this conversation better than we do, but there's two themes. We, we love to talk about how rules are getting broken and yet language for millennia has been all about breaking rules. Um, Another example would be women with an X, right? I mean, that mm-hmm. has its own particular history, but mm-hmm. I, I did not see X in that one, right? This year that I thought I would never do, which is that I, I changed the um, grammaticality. I changed the legality of a word because we've had themself mm-hmm. in the dictionary for a gazillion years as a non-standard variant of themselves. However, if you accept a paradigm, which we have accepted, um, that they, them, there can refer to a singular definite referent, Mm -hmm. then you need, I mean, there are people who will still use themselves in that paradigm, but you have to say that themselves is not strictly non-standard anymore, that there is a standard job that it does as a partner to they, them, their um, kind of non-binary trans pronoun paradigm, mm-hmm. which um, that's, look, language changes, what John just said, language changes all the time. Things that were not grammatical are grammatical now, things that are grammatical now might not be one day, but I never thought that I'd go into an entry and change the grammatical status of a word. I mean, mm-hmm. that was a, it was just a, like a mind blowing day for me. <laughs> and sometimes this happens on the level of, I mean, I think for these words, these sorts of words are very much uh, top of mind on our culture. Uh, they're very important, they're very urgent, they're very interesting, they're very exciting. But I was having a conversation just the other day with our director of lexicography and she was talking about, oh, what was it? Um, a young. So she was finding, you know, the, the dictionary team was finding evidence for using young as uh, with the, you know, with an indefinite article there, a young. And she was like, this is like, this is, this is breaking news in lexicography world. Um, so sometimes it's, yes, it's about Lat- Latinx or Latinx. See, I almost just use both there, but other times it's still this like, the, the elbow grease of like, oh, you can have a young as opposed to just young without an article. Um, was it animals? Was it like? It was, it was animals. She found, um, one, of, oh. one of the lexicographers found a reference to a bird. A, yep. A bird. Yep. That, does, that doesn't sound totally shocking. Right. It's yeah. not something you would think of as, and it, you know, maybe it's been a regionalism for years and it's emerging. I mean, so how you see a reference, you see a young, and that's, uh, is it, that's probably not defined at dictionary.com yet, or is it? And how would it, what would the process be for actually having that as an entry or as a definition under young? That's a, that's a good process question for Heather. Um, real, before we transition to that, uh, I see Susan asks, is it analogous to the old? I, my first thought was, mm. oh, we, we have these humorous singulars and plurals now where we're playing with the grammaticality, ironically. Oh, you're just an old. And that it is, you know, making that a noun, an account noun at that, has this level of irony. My, fir- my first mind was, oh, a young, that must be like an internet Twitter thing or something, or a, a Reddit, you know, trolling the boomers kind of thing. But no, it was about baby birds. Um, Mm -hmm. Anyways, so that's to answer your question there, uh, Susan. And I will defer the process question on updating a young to Heather. Thank you, John. (laughs) Um, No, I'm not not too worried about a young. It might end up tweaking a pronoun at the definition, but dictionary.com is not usually it's learners dictionaries or sometimes children's dictionaries that show countability right so um there are dictionaries out there that will say you know this is a a count noun or this is a a mass noun a singular noun whatever thing but um dictionary.com in its standard defining um does not things are i mean certainly verbs are transitive intransitive or both um, but n- countability of nouns is not 
right mm -hmm. at the top of the uh, part of speech block. So, phew, mm -hmm. well, but it, but it, but John but can it. toss that ball to me and I can toss uh, it right <laughs> away. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm here right. for your baby bird talk all day. <laughs> yeah, but a uh, young uh, is a noun, whether mm -hmm. it's count or not, but what is a noun? I was noun, I was young and noun otherwise. Oh, well, no, I mean, I think I'm, I'm, I can, I'm not looking at it right now, but I can tell you almost certainly that the, um, the uncountable sense of young is uh -huh. almost certainly like, uh, yeah, don't yeah. approach the mama bear. She's protecting her young. Her young of course. Um, the, that kind of plural senior, connotation. I'm sure that's in the dictionary. So, um, so it would just be a matter of tweaking our idea of what's possible as far as the singular there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we have a lot of people very interested in words. And if you have any questions about emerging words, um, where we stand with things, or the, the, the process questions, which I love, uh, feel free to ask them in the group chat. And we will um, put query in front of it. And we'll um, get you to unmute and ask your question. Um, I have a question for Heather. Um, that may be a little bit out of left field, but your the the photo you use in uh, social media is a Peru soccer kit. And how did you why, know? No one ever recognizes it. Well, and, and I and well, I guess I I was curious to where it was from, and so I looked closely. But my um my so here's my connection is this that my uh, son-in-law's brother's girlfriend is Peruvian. And so during the Women's World Cup, my daughter and I, um, we decided that, you know, we were U.S. and Peru was our, our underdog team, which, you know, we followed for a tiny little bit there. So what's the, what's the Peruvian connection? So my dad is Peruvian. Ah, okay. Um, my dad, so my dad is um, born and bred in Lima. He's Limeño. Um, he immigrated to the U.S. in the 70s. And um, so that's my team. Also my dad, so his name is Carlos, Carlos Guerrero. And so if you actually look okay. closely at my Peruvian <laughs> jersey, uh -huh. the star player, although he has a, injury right now but the star player in recent years of the Peruvian team the Peruvian national team that plays in the World Cup is a Guerrero no um no relation but mm. I actually I own the jersey and it, my maiden name is just splayed across the back uh, and uh and yeah I mean the Peruvian team had not made the World Cup in several years and they did two years ago and went out to all the bars and I screamed and I yelled and I, I had a lovely time. Um, and um, yeah, we didn't make it very far, but we did ourselves proud and, and that's my team. Those, All right. those Terrific. are my people. Terrific. <laughs> then the, uh, the other out of left field question, I suppose, for John is what the heck is mashed radish? Oh, gosh. Um, I blogged about word origins uh, weekly, if not more, for mm -hmm many years. Um, I had been working in the, uh, I've been working in the uh, community for services that support uh, adults with autism for a long time. And I, I loved Word Origins, as I mentioned. So I started a blog back in 2013, where I just wrote about the origins of words that were trending in the news. And I just kept at it. And that actually got me plugged into sort of language Twitter, which is a, a wonderful Twitter. Uh, and, a great place for networking too. And, and some of those connections are actually why I'm here at um, dictionary.com. Um, if I may, I'm seeing in the chat an interesting conversation about youths that reminded me of something. <laughs> um, I mentioned before that uh, black popular culture and black music is responsible for a lot of uh, language change um, as far as new terms in the mainstream um, among other things. Um, one interesting one is not just from America to the, you, you know, America to the world, it's actually from uh, Caribbean diaspora. So due to the popularity of UK drill music, which is a particular subgenre of hip hop in South London, 
that is heavily informed by the language of uh, people from the Caribbean diaspora, we're seeing things like um, mandem before. So we're, we're seeing features of Caribbean English um, that are spreading due to the success of these international hip hop stars. Drake, who's from an area of uh, Toronto that has a lot of Caribbean immigrants, um, is also helping to spread uh, Caribbean slang like never before. So mandem, yutem, um, a lot of these things are spreading uh, in an unlikely way uh, from, you know, the patois of English in the Caribbean, which has its own long history, its own complicated and rich history, goes to the UK, it intermixes with uh, US hip hop, becomes its own thing, then it spreads all over the world. So you have these just absolutely fascinating geographies that are cross sections of human history, all in a word like mandem. And mandem is like, mandem is just another word for, you know, those people, um, other people, uh, dem using, I believe, a form of them as a plural. Um, and, you know, it gets used in a, the lyrics of a song, maybe Drake, the uh, hip hop R&B artist uses it. And all of a sudden, you've got Caribbean English um, on dictionary.com uh, in ways that you could never have predicted. Um, so that's the answer kind of to the use pronunciation. And those spellings like Utes too will will be something we really pay attention to uh, both in the written form and our pronunciations for it, whether it's on our slang content, our editorial content, or in the definitions themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I don't think we ever got an answer to mashed radish though. Oh, okay. So what does it mean? Gosh, wow. Um, it is, it, it's, break, it's about breaking down roots, right? So mash, breaking down, radish also comes from the, the same Latin word that means root, radical. Oh. Um, so it's sort of a catchy, but yet obscure um, way to talk about breaking down word origins. Okay. Yeah. So, so and you said you used to you used to blog regularly about word origins, and um, I I saw you did pandemic uh, a couple of months ago. As right. a blog. is that is that something you're? I mean, is your dictionary.com duties keeping you from that? Is it uh, putting you on the say, spot here? Are you? Why I would you say that more? I get to. It's a great question. Um, <laughs> I get to use, I get to do a lot of that work for a living now. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing that less in my free time. Um, although it's been, you know, I did pandemic. That was the first post in two years when I used to post uh, twice a week religiously. But um, now that, uh, now that we're sort of in the swing of things, uh, dictionary.com, I, I do kind of have an appetite again to do it again, but uh, it's about bandwidth really. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. And that's everybody's, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. We should, we should all blog more, darn it. Uh, another question along those lines then. I, I think there must be a, a joke here and I don't get it. You're, um, you have a, a Twitter account uh, where you um, tweet about Shakespeare. Um, you know, you're, you're so focused on modern, but you're, you know, you've also got this uh, Elizabethan component. Bard confide. Dench. Oh gosh, yeah. So what am I missing? I should I, I should probably <laughs> update this too because it's not exactly up to date. Um, in 2016, uh, to mark the tw uh, 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death, I weirdly took it upon myself to read the complete works of William Shakespeare. Yeah. I blogged about it, and mm -hmm. I had a Twitter account that was semi-active in relationship to it, and. I think the original name was Bard Confidential. That's too long for Twitter. So I shortened it in the way that we are shortening a lot of words and slang. Um, so you look very profesh today or um, natch as short for naturally. So that's where that came from. Um, so right now the Shakespeare content is not active, uh, but I, I hope to maybe okay. Pick it up again because the bard never seems to um, get old, as old as he is. Yeah. Did you do? Did you uh, successfully go beginning to end? Read all of? Uh... I did. I did. I read everything that has been attributed to him. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, my takeaways would be, um, let's see. Obviously, the usual suspects are as amazing as ever. Um, as you like it is just utterly delightful. That one rose to the top. 
Um, do not read the sonnets in one sitting. I do okay. not advise that to anybody. Just okay. do not read <laughs> any in one sitting. And to answer Teresa's question, yes, I did read Titus Andronicus, <laughs> and that was um, well. We'll have to save that for a different chat. <laughs> Um, uh, Sir Patrick Stewart is reading a sonnet a day every day yeah. of quarantine and he's on like 112 or something. Um, I, I enjoy having my sonnets read to me so I don't have to <laughs> parse the text. Sure. Yeah, the first 18, the ones that play on the, the economic conceits are um, not exactly ones to write to write to your significant other about. So, right. As somebody who's interested in word origins, that must have been... I, I mean, I can imagine reading through Shakespeare and stopping every 20th word and saying, oh, you know, that's, I mean, it's used differently. It's, it's a few hundred years old. And were, were there a lot of gems where you kind of saw an origin? Oh, yeah. and aware? I, I kept a, I kept one notebook where I just tracked unusual words and that notebook quickly multiplied into many notebooks. So many mm. that, that I'm having a hard time even um, pulling one out now, but it's definitely clear that you can see uh, how much language is in flux, uh, how much the modern form differs from the Shakespearean form, and the comedies above all. I mean, my gosh, keeping track of the jokes and the comedies and the linguistic yeah. density of it, those were the, those were the slowest ones to read. Um, I actually thought the histories were going to be the hardest, but um, mm. they very much kind of read like Game of Thrones. Um, the three <laughs> Henry the Sixth part ones are just an absolute um, action packed comedy fest, really. Um, the comedies were the ones that were densest. And that makes sense because comedy is topical. Um, right. Well, and the jokes are I mean, the jokes, there's so many jokes there that you, you can easily miss because you don't know the language. Yes. So yeah. if anyone works for Norton here, shout out to the Norton Anthology, the, the Norton Shakespeare, because the footnotes to those are, um, well, I couldn't have gotten through it without it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, we're, uh, we're, I think we're just about out of time. I, and uh, I thought we'd have some questions, but we've covered everything anybody would want to know or maybe people didn't want to interrupt or they just asked in chat. But uh, if anybody has any questions, um, shout out now because we're about to we're about to go. So, you know, now's your your last chance if you have a question about um, about words. Let me ask you both. Um, Dictionary.com does a, a word of the year like, um, you know, a lot of dictionaries. When do, when do you do yours? What uh, how late? How early in the year? You're not like in October, like Oxford, are you? Historically, uh, we're doing it very late November, um, early December, but it always okay. depends on the data. Yeah. So what's, uh, any predictions? Well, I'm not going to spill any beans here. We are <laughs> already doing the research. Uh, we know that it's only September, uh, but this has been, we've never had quite a year like this before. Uh, the right. pandemic and the protests have, have got us all interested about language in so many different ways um, that uh, we're definitely really just trying to, um, really trying to make sense and honor the, the incredible trends we've seen from COVID-19 to, to uh, the George Floyd, George Floyd protests. Um, mm -hmm. So we're digging in, stay posted. All right. All right, and if and you you just do the one word of the year, so I'm sure when uh, with the, um, the 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 American Dialect Dialect Society does now they do like a hundred different categories it seems, and so I think there we'll probably see WAP as a or WAP as a uh, uh, acronym of the year. That's kind of a shoe in, um, but we'll uh, we'll see what you guys come up with. Um, Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It's been like it's it's been an action-packed hour. There's just so much, so much interesting stuff here. So I appreciate um, both of you coming on the show and um, and uh, spending some time with us. And uh, we we'll... our, our pleasure. Thanks for having us. Yes, I had a super time, and uh, I'm I'm gonna reread the chat because I I missed some stuff. Oh. 
Well, guys... it'll, it'll go away in a minute, but Heather is going to send it to you. So okay. the other the other Heather, our yeah. uh, showrunner, is going to send it to you. So you'll you'll have that. The, the secret Heather hookup. Good. Yes. Yes. You're yeah. You probably have a Slack group of just all Heather <laughs> or something, right? So. All right, thank you very much, and thanks everybody. Oh, in a couple of weeks, we've got the quad. So we've got like seven, is it seven uh, people? Aaron Brenner and six of our good friends um, are going to be here. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be a party. Um, you know, we'll have everybody talking at once, and it'll be great. So uh, come back in two weeks, and thank you very much, everybody. And thanks. Be well out there. Thank you.